Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. Out of all the vegetables, celery has the highest IQ. Oh, welcome to a Starter and Chaser podcast, where weekly we review one whiskey and one beer just for you guys. I'm professional brewer John Passo. I'm whiskey connoisseur Joe Clark. And for the starter, we have George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey Bottled in Bond 13 year. And for the chaser, we have Left Hand Brewing Company's Galactic Cowboy Nitro Imperial Stout. I'm excited about that one. I like them left hand products, but let me tell you a little bit about the George Dickel. George Dickel Distillery was started in 1964, and that is in Cascade Hollow, Cascade right? Hollow Tennessee. Yeah, okay. And uh, it is owned by Diageo Spirits, and it is a 13 year old bottled and bond product, meaning also it is 100 proof. Mm hmm. Brewed in, what is distilled really, in a single session, right? Yes. 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 One distilling season. And there's a really interesting thing about this George Dickel product. It, it was cherry picked by their new master distiller, who is a female, Nicole Austin, who's 35 years old. Uh, it's very rare in both the brewing industry and the whiskey industry to have a female brewer or distiller, and the more the merrier. And uh, this is a product from a female distiller that she went through and handpicked, and I'm super excited about it. And also, uh, be, was picked by Whiskey Advocates magazine for their top number one spot for Whiskey of the Year in 2019. This seems to be one of your go-to bottles in general, John. Oh, well, I don't uh, uh, Maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. So what I also hear um, is rumor, which if you could comment down below, is that Nicole has actually been going around to their, a lot of their older barrels and kind of pulling them out and bringing them to the limelight for us like this. And if I remember correctly, price-wise, this was pretty inexpensive. Uh, I think it was thirty-five or forty dollars. Of course, okay. once the the uh, number Hype. one pick was <laughs> uh, released by Whiskey Advocate, it flew off the shelves. And I actually was moving across country from California to here, and I found a, one bottle of it in. Uh, in you Texas. went to a hundred damn different stores. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. yeah, I was sending him pictures all along. Yeah. But we've got this poured. Yeah, we do. Let's take a look. What's it look like? Very brown. Um, I'm getting a lot of brown on that. I'm getting a little edge of like, yeah, Joe's right, it is brown, but I'm getting a little like notes of amber on the edge. Sure. But it's not much. It's it's just kind of a It's not standard. super heavy. You see, notice the legs come down. They're coming down pretty yeah, quick. Yeah. They're coming down. Semi. It's a semi-thick drink. I don't know. It's about it's a medium. Bad. I'd say it's, it's a medium. No, it's nice. It's nice. Oh. Give, it a, give it a whiff. It's got that signature George Dickel musty, mossy note to the nose. Okay. It's very overpowering. Then you kind of notice a little of the vanillas and the caramels in the background. This has got a... Really interesting note. I'm always having so much trouble pulling these out of the dickles. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to wait for this one to transfer over on palate, John. Okay. I think we should take a hit of this. Prost. Let's do it. Take a snort. Hmm. Ooh. It's got a bite. It's got it's, some heat. It's got a little little dickle tickle. Yeah, yeah. Well uh South of Kentucky hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely nice. Hmm. Uh, what are you getting on the flavors, John? Caramel, mouth-watering. Um, yeah. A little bit of a spice. A little bit of a... Um, it's almost like rye meets... Um, Cooking spices. Caraway. Ooh, I don't even know what that is, but okay. Caraway and uh, yeah, a rye meets caraway. It's interesting. Hmm. That's that's unique. It's like a Russian rye bread almost, kind of on the just front palate. Uh, I don't think I've gotten that in a whiskey before. I'm going to go this back for a second one. finishes really fast, though. Hmm. Hmm. 
But like I'm John did say, I'm going to say he is correct on it. This is very mouthwatering. Yeah. Um, where it makes you almost makes you want to keep drinking it. Really, uh, some whiskeys in the higher uh, alcohol content want to dry your mouth out. Sometimes um, some of the same brands in the same alcohol content. Some are finished dry, like a wine. Some wines are dry finishing. Mm -hmm. Some are very, you know, uh, uh, what do they say? Succulent. Yeah. Yeah. And this is more on the succulent side of whiskey. For uh, sure. Yeah. I've been. As you've been talking, <clears throat> I've been listening to you, and I've also been trying to pay attention to the, the finish, like you mentioned. Uh, it Ooh. It's changing a little bit now. Uh, originally, initially, it did drop off. This one, I took a sip of it. It was there for a little bit. The flavors dropped off, but they, they dropped off the center tongue and moved to the corners of my tongue, which is interesting. And it's just been sitting there, and it's been building this caramel brown sugar this whole time, which is really interesting. I'm really not getting any barrel notes to no, it. No, no. I'm not getting For a 13 year old ton. product, you think you would. You know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm not getting a ton of complexity, but what I am getting is just this nice, succulent, mouth-watering, caramel uh, on the side of my tongue. And it's just sitting there and I'm, it's wanting me to go back for more. That's the interesting thing about, about tasting is sometimes yeah. you can find a product that while it is very crisp and very clean and it drops off on the finish very quickly, sometimes that will lend to the drinkability because it makes you want to go back and have another sip and experience, experience that over again. And I feel that that's the case with this one. I'm getting that brown sugar on the back end now that really sits there mm -hmm. for a little while. Um, I thought I was smelling, you know, vanilla on the nose and everything, but I'm, I don't get any of it on the on the transfer to the palate. I don't get vanilla either. I do get a little coconut, which is from the barrel. Um, that actually might be what I'm picking up there. I get a hint of that musty. Yeah, but it's just a hint. It is. It's not <clears throat> super powerful like another drink we've had of theirs. Um, it is actually. The mustiness on this one is much more well balanced. Absolutely, yeah. uh -huh. absolutely. Yeah, um, and a well balanced drink all around. I would say. I finished um, it. <laughs> I know. I rarely do we finish the the samples. The hug stays with you. Yeah. I'll tell you that is definitely warm in the mouth going down my chest. I, I, I'm feeling the heat. I get it not in the hot, back of my throat. Not hot. I don't. I don't get the heat. I get it in the back of my throat, and that's it. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of. It's carrying right down here for me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, we will be right back with The Chaser, so sit tight. Welcome back to a Starter and Chaser podcast for The, the Chaser. Chaser. And we have, from Left Hand Brewing Company, their Galactic Cowboy Nitro Imperial Stout. <clears throat> now, Left Hand Brewing Company started out as a homebrew operation in 1990, mm -hmm. and it eventually moved to a production facility in 1993 in Longmont, Colorado. Now this is an imperial stout that's been nitrogenated. And this is pretty unique for me because typically the nitro stouts, they're like Irish dry stouts, they're 5% alcohol. I don't think I've ever had an imperial stout nitro. Nitro. So this nice. will be a fun, fun experiment. It's 9% alcohol. It is 44 IBUs. So I think we just need to crack this one open, Joe. Let's do it, man. All right. And this actually came recommended to me while I was at Chagrin Valley Beverage by, um, I would guess, what I, I haven't got his name yet, and I will ask. <laughs> um, I'm hard with names. Uh, they're beer master there. And uh, he saw me grabbing the milk stout from them and rec highly recommended this. Now, being a nitro, of course, you can give it a rough pour right down the center of your glass because that's how it's designed to be. Look at that bad boy coming through, man. Show the cascade. Show the cascade. Look at that. It's neat. Now, this Ooh. one. Wow. Oh, kind of like a creamy uh, coffee that had cream added to it. What would that Colored be? Colored like espresso. Yeah, kind of it's got an it. espresso head. Yeah. Good job. That's it. Uh, no light coming through there. No, it's a dark one, man. What are you smelling? Super hoppy. Really? It smells super hoppy. And malty. Yeah. All right. 
Any hot, any hot uh, rating on that? Or? No, uh, 44 IBUs. Okay. But uh, I was just Is that good? It. Is that high? Uh, for Imperial Stouts, that's actually not that high. Okay. Well, you get it on the nose. Now, just a because it has chocolate. a lot of hop aroma doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be hot Transfer. In beer. Yeah. Yeah. IBUs mm -hmm. are, for aromatic hops, it's Ooh. very low that they add to the IBUs. Man, does that look creamy, dude? Mm hmm. Wow. So you said uh, chocolate? Yeah, I get a little kind of a dark chocolate smell to it, which I seem to find with these um, uh, dark uh, stout, Stouts. you know, beers and mm -hmm. stuff. They have, doesn't always transfer on the palate either. It's just the aroma to it. Sometimes you pick up coffee, bean kind of smell to it, even mm. though it's not a coffee stout. So and that's typically from the roasted malts. Okay. Higher kiln malts yeah, will give cool. you that coffee note, the chocolate note. I say slange. Slange, I say prost. I'm going in for a second. Okay. I'm going to preface this with, with what I've said in the past about nitro beers. I'm not a nitro fan. It takes off those rough edges that I like in a beer. That being said, this is an imperial stout that's been nitrogenated, nitrogenated never had it. There are some rough edges here. Yep. Uh, and by that, I mean you get those roasted malts, you get the coffee note, you get the chocolate. Yeah. Um, this, I'm getting a lot of hops on this, man. I'm getting a lot of hops, Yeah, too. weird. Did they, did they rate that wrong? Man, I mean, it's hoppy, dude. It could be. Their website said 44, so either they put it... No, it says 44 on the can there, too. Dude, I'm getting way... I'm getting pretty heavy hop notes on this, man. I'm digging this. This is very well balanced for all the different flavors in there. Kind of chocolatey, coffee, hoppy. I'm even pulling a little citrusy notes on this. This is cool, man. I'm getting, I'm getting chocolate. I'm getting coffee. And it's oscillating between the two, chocolate, coffee, chocolate, coffee. And then it comes in an undercurrent of like cream, yeah. like milk, mm -hmm. coffee, creamer. Yeah. And then I swallow and that's where it goes downhill for me. Really? I get heat. I get a lot of alcohol heat. It's 9% alcohol, which is, a, you know, for Imperial Stout, it's not that high, but I don't feel the alcohol is well integrated here. Uh, and it's it's really off-putting for me. It's throwing me off and then you Compound that with some of that hot bitterness and It's like it's button heads with the coffee roasted dark Malts and then that alcohol comes in and it's a trifecta of nope for me okay. and I'm I, you know, I usually save my my full analysis to the end, but right off the bat, I, you know, I love Left Hand Brewing Company. I absolutely love what they do. The, the do they nitro do nitros is great. or are they no, just they, they oh, do tons oh, of stuff. okay. They're they're regular nitro stout. I love. I mean, it's my favorite nitro. That's from somebody that doesn't like nitro. But what this, the milk stout or yeah, the nitro milk stout. Yeah. But this, God, right off, I I'm having a hard time with this one. Mm -hmm. No, you like it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Fair enough. And, I you know, dig it. That's that's the fun part about this show is Joe's getting into beer. I've been into beer for a long time. And it really showcases that everybody, regardless of how much experience or how little experience you have, we all have different palates. We all yeah. like different things. Different and needs, that, different wants. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Do you like it or don't you like it? Yeah. So that being said, let's bo go back. Go, bo, go, go. Bo go. Bo go back to uh, George Dickel here, Tennessee Bottle and Bond, 13 year. What do you think about that? I already know what you think. <laughs> Considering I've drunk in half the bottle and like <laughs> <laughs> too short of a time, I really wanted to make that one last. It's, it's a really uh, well-crafted barrel pick, no, well, that's not a barrel pick, but uh, a, a pick of 13 year old barrels uh, from their new master distiller. I mean, it really showcases what she's bringing to the company and her skill set that she picked a product like that. It's fantastic. It's great. Yeah, it is. 
When I'm going to mirror exactly that. I'm not really going to say much anything else. Um, that's the best George Dickel product I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, it still reigns king, even over some of the other ones I've had. Um, sometimes I go back and forth between this and a different bottle, but um, this is my second time having this, and I'm going to kind of lean towards this one now. Nice. So, yeah, actually, yeah, second time, third time, something like that. But yeah. uh, I'm liking this one uh, over a ball. John already kind of gave his synopsis on the beer. He's got a, he's not down with it. Um, I'm, I'm going to disagree guys. with you on that. Um, I like it a lot. I'm digging these nitros. I, so far, nitros have really blown me away, especially from Left Hand Brewing. I'm digging your products. Now, I, I only thought you did nitro. I'm new into beer, so forgive me for that. But um, I'm interested to try your non-nitrogenated or your CO2 beers yeah. and see how that goes. They've got a great Pilsner too. Cool. I yeah. Like all right. Well, there That's we go. It. I mean, I'm, I like it. I'll uh -huh. drink this all day. Here you go. Yeah. All right. Here so, we go. well, Joe Double Fist, be sure to hit the subscribe <laughs> button. Uh, we also have a Patreon account. If you enjoyed the show, feel free to uh, donate to our Patreon account. We would very much appreciate the support. And uh, we will be back next week with another episode of Starter and Chaser Podcast. Thank you for listening, guys. If you need to hear us, view the links down below. See you next time.